Uh-oh, looks like Ariana Grande might have to get another tattoo covered up as her fans have pointed out that her new hand tattoo that was supposed to spell out seven rings in fact says something entirely different. Kim Kardashian found herself in hot water once again after wearing Kalani braids to the MTV Awards. Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at that. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Oh, how much are you charging? Green book. Ah! <laughs> This doesn't start, by the way, without Vigo Mortensen. We have a problem. The melting pot that is America has become too convoluted with animosity. Racial stigmas and stereotypes have infiltrated our schools, our politics, our celebrities, and our daily lives. The source of this hate runs deep in Western society, and the country that wants to become great again seems to only get worse from here on out. Though she didn't necessarily apologize, Kim did add, quote, in no way am I ever trying to disrespect someone's culture by wearing braids. Um, it makes me feel kind of disrespected in a way. It makes me feel infuriated. Being black, like, how has that impacted your, like, viewpoint of the world? Um, in a very kind of sad way, it's really taught me to not really trust the world or, like, the world's not made for me. My little cousin, she gets called ghetto for wearing braids. But the second that a Kardashian were, were to wear braids, it's all of a sudden a, the hot new trend or it's all of a sudden appropriate. Like, just recently, I believe it was in New York City that they finally allowed uh, black women or people of color to wear their hair in, like, their cultural, in their cultural way, such as, like, bantu knots or cornrows or other types of dreads. It's really disrespectful that black people can't be black or have their own hairstyle the way they want to until it comes to the point where a celebrity like the Kardashians get to do it and the whole world flocks on it and says, oh, this is, a, this is a new trend, oh, this is trendy, but the second a black woman does it, it's considered ghetto or unprofessional. Black women have really been hit it on for a very long time, but at the same time, they have been, they have been like fetishized by not only like white men, but also women that aren't black. You can't go on a job interview and expect to get a job if you are a black woman kind of being yourself. But you see a white woman or a Hispanic woman or an Asian woman wearing like cornrows, kind of getting like those thick curves that she's worked for to be like a black woman. And all of a sudden she's praised and loved by every single person, they kind of consider them as loud and the term ratchet, like I'm sure you guys know what it means, but I think it's kind of within our community and outside of our community, black women aren't appreciated for what they do, but as soon as a person appropriates our culture and does what we've been doing forever, it's seen as better because the person who's done it is not a black woman. When it comes to POC culture, Westerners are known for stealing from and profiting off of the commercialization of minorities. But the hate doesn't come from the top. It starts with everyday people like us. You see, Ari got this tattoo on her hand that is supposed to spell out seven rings. However, some of Ari's fans were quick to point out that her tattoo does not spell out seven rings. It actually translates into a word that means Small charcoal grill. Do you know who Ar Ariana Grande is? Yes. Do you like her? Um, not really. I used to like her, but I just don't really like all the stuff that's been happening with her and like the Japanese culture. Well, first off, I didn't, it was kind of annoying that she had Japanese words on her merch and like on her album. Where does this commercialization of Japanese culture even begin in Western society? It starts with our very own celebrities. Just in this past year, singer Ariana Grande was under fire for her fetishization and appropriation of Japanese culture. Yeah, so basically there's a difference between uh, actually learning the culture, history, uh, uh, to uh, commercialism. You know, if you think that you're learning the culture of Japan, 
by learning through the commercialism, mm -hmm. then you may not necessarily get the correct information. However, the way things are going now, that's part of the culture, right? It's that it's part of the culture to appreciate what uh, what's commercialized. How does that make you feel when you? Like when you are a certain race or like ethnic ethnic group or something, and like other people can't tell, like distinguish that. Like, does that make you feel like I don't know, like <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess it depends on the situation, but most of the time, no, not at all. It doesn't bother. I mean, for me, sometimes I see it seems like weird because everyone assumes that I'm just like a white cracker until I tell them like I'm a quarter Japanese. So they're like, what? I can't even see it. And I'm like, well, like everyone always says I look so Japanese, and they're like, I can't see it. So that's kind of annoying. Oh, yeah, okay. And so are you dressed as an anime character? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, can we ask who you're dressed as? Yeah, I'm Himiko Yumeno from Danganronpa V3. Okay, and you're just, are you just, you're just dressed up, I'm right? I'm just yeah. Yukata. <laughs> yeah, okay. 外国の人をモチーフにされてるアニメとかも多いし、外国の人は綺麗な目を持ってたり、顔立ちが綺麗だったりするのですごく再現力が高いのでいいと思います。Um, it's kind of hard because like when I go to Japan, I get like like when I go to school and stuff, um all my classmates are like, "Oh my gosh, like your your hair is so light, your eyes are so brown." And they're like, "Oh my gosh, can you speak English to me?" Um, but then, like, you see on the news, like, that girl that won, like, Miss Universe? Yeah, and she, but then, like, the Japanese people didn't really claim her. They were like, she's not full Japanese. That's not from our country. Being both Japanese and white can be a blessing and a curse because, like, first off, when people just, like, come to, like, look at me and they first initially see me and, like, lo first looks are everything, right? And uh, when they actually, like, initially see me, Sometimes it's it's it can be hard for people to like distinguish whether I'm white or Asian or if I'm just white or if I'm just Asian and as like having that half kind of a box placed around me it, it, like when I went to Japan uh, to visit my family it was really like although like I, all the people there were friendly and I, I feel like that's definitely an ideal of the Japanese to fr foreigners but it was really interesting to see like that I almost felt like it was kind of weird when I went uh, walked into a, a Shinto temple, uh, so just like a like a temple for they have like a big taiko drum and there's a priest who is uh, chanting, but when I walked in and there was like the Japanese, um, uh, many Japanese people were in there. It was it was almost like really weird. It just felt weird for me because I just I'm not full Japanese and it's just it's not the same I guess. Yeah, when I'm working. I actually intentionally hide my identity as Japanese because I don't look Japanese to Japanese people for some reason. And um, one of the reasons why I do that is that there is, um, I don't know what, I don't want to. Just say it, just say it. Well, I think that um, there is a racism everywhere. And Japan is a one race nation. And coming from Japan, um, I never see different race as different race. But if you're in Japan, it's very obvious. If you're not Japanese, look, uh, hair, skin, then you're definitely a different people. Black fishing is a recent phenomenon in which people of a lighter skin color undergo severe tanning or other cosmetic surgeries in order to appear more black. Black fishing is not only within the confines of appearance, it also comes from the usage of AAVE, also known as African American Vernacular English. I think it's truly disgusting. I'm so sorry, but like, so many celebrities do it and we still stand them and it's kind of gross. No white person wants to be treated the same way a black person is. There's a certain type of black that you have to be as a woman to be considered like beautiful. It's like those thick girls with long hair like weaves or something like that that wear makeup and all that stuff, right? They want to be those black women that are trending right now and are being fetishized. And it's also celebrities. Let's talk about Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande has been stealing black culture for eternity. It's disgusting. She was white, but now she's not even the same shade of white. 
And then yesterday, I don't know, I saw her like a video on SNL or something like that, but she was basically being herself as a nun and she was literally going off of the black woman stereotype and acting like that is her true nature. At what point do we go too far with our love for a culture and disrespect those that we borrowed from? I think appreciation versus appropriation is just, it's a lack of like acknowledging that that culture is separate from what your, like their, that person's original culture is. Like I think that ultimately you can always appreciate somebody's culture, but somebody else's culture, whether that's black, white, Asian, whatever. But ultimately, I think you have to go back to your roots, and that's that's kind of what your culture is. And so, you can appreciate the culture, but you can't necessarily just take on that culture as your own. That's my thoughts on appropriation versus appreciation. I think the line between appropriation and appreciation is okay. So I'm gonna say the words in practice and in observance. So it's okay to be in observance of black culture, or let's say any culture. It's okay to observe and to appreciate from like, let's say, a, like a good distance away. But it's, to me, it's not okay to uh, participate in it, in like certain cases. So for example, you can have appreciation of braids, you can have appreciation of all the things that make black culture, black culture. But to me, it's not really okay to sink your foot in and to actually participate when things, like when it's not, when the situation doesn't call for it. But it has to do a lot with intention and respect. Because if you're appreciating culture, you know what to do and what not to do. You know what is okay, you know the line, right? You know like that wearing cornrows is kind of degrading to black culture because black women have been kind of disrespected and seen as disgusting or dirty because they've been doing that. That would be appropriation. Appreciation is having the intention of like appreciating a culture and what like it kind of stands for and everything like that. Society works like nature. If the roots are rotten, the whole tree dies. Thank mm -hmm. you.